Welcome everyone to this video, let's see what is the biggest blunder in Hollywood history. This video is brought to you by the question response channel, the channel where you will find the answer to everything. Today Michael Schlesinger, Mario Martini and Wayne Kozak will present their point of view to us. We will start with the answer of Michael Schlesinger. Here's one. Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks' wife, saw a play and wanted to make a movie of it. They felt it could be done for $5 million. Hanks personally went to every studio in town to make it, they all turned him down. Now let me interject who says no to Tom Hanks, especially for a measly $5 million? Had any of them said yes, he would now owe them a favor. And then they could have called him and said, we want you to play Green Goblin in the new Spider-Man movie, and he would have done it. But they all said, not interested. So they made the movie themselves, using their own money and a few bucks scraped together from outside investors. They then shopped it around, and guess what? Every studio in town turned it down, again. Finally, they made a deal with a tiny spin-off company called IFC. The picture opened and took in $250 million North American theatrical in 2002 dollars, about $400 million today, the biggest gross ever for an independent film until Passion of the Christ, and still number two. On a budget of $5 million, tens of millions of profit that could have gone to any studio had just one of them said yes. The name of that movie? Scroll down. Greater than. Greater than. Greater than. Greater than. Greater than. My big fat Greek wedding. We can continue with Michael Schlesinger's answer. Here's one, Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks' wife, saw a play and wanted to make a movie of it. They felt it could be done for $5 million. Hanks personally went to every studio in town to make it, they all turned him down. Now let me interject, who says no to Tom Hanks, especially for a measly $5 million. Had any of them said yes, he would now owe them a favor. And then they could have called him and said, we want you to play Green Goblin in the new Spider-Man movie, and he would have done it. But they all said, not interested. So they made the movie themselves, using their own money and a few bucks scraped together from outside investors. They then shopped it around, and guess what? Every studio in town turned it down, again. Finally, they made a deal with a tiny spin-off company called IFC. The picture opened and took in $250 million North American theatrical in $2002, about $400 million today, the biggest gross ever for an independent film until Passion of the Christ, and still number two. On a budget of $5 million, tens of millions of profit that could have gone to any studio had just one of them said yes. The name of that movie, scroll down, greater than, greater than, greater than, greater than, greater than, my big fat Greek wedding. We can continue with Michael Schlesinger's answer. They simply control the narrative. Hedy Lamar was several things in her life. Movie star, inventor, and more mundanely, wife and mother. She was a wife six times and a divorcee six times. She had a little more luck with her children, but not completely. Her first marriage ended after four years when she literally ran out on her husband. She escaped from his domineering presence by disguising herself as their maid and fleeing their native Austria for Paris. Her second marriage, to a Jean Marquis, lasted two years. During this time they adopted a baby boy named James. His legal name became James Lamar Marquis. Her third marriage was to fellow actor, John Loder, who also gave his name to James, who now became James Lamar Loder. This marriage produced two biological children, Denise and Tony. It was another short-lived marriage lasting four years. Hedy with her three children, James being the oldest. There didn't seem to be much love by Hedy to young James. Shortly before his teens James was shipped off to a boarding school and that was the end of their relationship. While at school he developed a close relationship with his teacher and her husband and they became surrogate parents. James was later to write. The last I saw of my mother as a child would have been when I was about in fifth grade. I tried to write to her, but the letters were returned. Effectively, she just said, you're no longer my son. Goodbye. Hedy was to have three more husbands, all childless but at the end seemed to have learned her lesson. Upon her last divorce in 1966 she remained single for her remaining 35 years. The story of Hedy and James had one more sting in the tail. When Hedy died in 2000 she left her fortune of $3 million to her two children from John Loder in her will. James was given access to documents including his birth certificate. When he read who his biological mother was he could hardly believe the words he was seeing. It was Hedy Lamar. And his biological father? It was John Loder. Hedy and John had had an affair and James was born out of wedlock. Jean Markey had been a handy father as Loder was married at the time of their affair. James immediately claimed an equal share of the inheritance claiming that he and Hedy had made up before her death. His siblings refuted this and his claim was denied, though he was awarded $50,000. But, he had to forever more live with the knowledge that his real mother and father had lied to him and denied him a proper relationship. The next answer is from Wayne Kozak. This is my opinion. The way Hollywood treated Fatty Arbuckle. He went through two trials and was found not guilty. The whole against him was built on one woman's allegations and the opinion of the newspaper reporters. He was on top of his career then everything fell apart. His career was never the same. This is the end of the video. Thank you for staying until the end.
If you found the answer you were looking for, please leave a like and subscribe, it would help us a lot. Friends it's now the end of this video, remember to leave a comment to tell us if these answers are more for you. See you soon.